I'm going to tie two flies in this video. One is a CDC microbugger. That's just been an absolutely killer fly for me um, towards the tail end of this winter when I was finally able to actually uh, do some fishing. And the CDC microbugger uh, really saved, saved a few days for me on the water. Uh, the other fly that I'm going to tie is a salmon, a salmon elven, which is a baby salmon. It's got a pretty distinctive egg yolk sac thing hanging off it. Okay, here we go. Hopefully these flies will work for you as well as they've been working for me. Um, but, you know, give them a try and let me know how it turns out. Starting with the CDC microbugger fly, I'm going to use um, a Fully Mill FM5105 hook and a size 10. This is kind of my favorite uh, hook for most of these streamers just because I've been using it and it works real well. I'm going to use a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead on this. Um, this is a barbless hook, so I don't have to do any crimping, which is great. You could tie this fly heavier. You could tie it lighter. You could probably tie it with no weight if you wanted to. Uh, whatever your conditions dictate, that's probably going to work. So let me get that bead on that hook. And put the fly in the vise. Get it cinched down. Nice and tight. I can always tell if I've got it level if my bead goes flying. So you can tie this this microbugger in any color uh, for which you can find materials. I've been tying it. I've been tying it in like a size 12 and this um, with this mini uh, barbed marabou, and that I think has turned out real well. I'll show you a picture of that. You could tie it. You could tie it in black. Um, this works well. You could tie it in brown. That's that's always good times. You could tie it in white. I mean, literally purple, whatever, anything. Um, I, I think they'd probably all work. So I'm going to tie this one in kind of a green. Uh, this has been the most productive color for me this year. So I've got, this happens to be UV um, olive marabou. And I'm going to use this uh, green, dyed green CDC. The uh, thread that I'm going to use is this um, UTC watery olive. This is in 70 denier, but you could obviously tie it in whatever you want. I'm just gonna get this started. Doesn't really matter where. Kind of work it back. Snip that bad boy. And you can do some feather selection. This is gonna be a small fly, so I don't I don't really need a whole lot. So I'm gonna pick some of the smaller Coils. It's going to be more than enough. That's why everything's so messy. Okay, and then I'm going to line these guys up, more or less, and then just preen them, kind of brush them forward, moving my hands to pull them forward. If you want to, and then I would tie this in about twice uh, as long as that shank, maybe even a little less. And then if you want to, you could use one. And I'm actually going to show you how to do that. So you could tie them both in at the same time. Or you can do what I'm going to do here just to demonstrate. So let me get one. That's, that's about right. Get that going. This is kind of a pain in the beginning. It wants to it wants to keep playing stop it you got to get around that hook point it's like all sorts of stuff happening at once but just keep keep fighting it keep encouraging it and then once you get started it'll stop try to just work that it doesn't really matter if it's on the top but it's kind of nice sometimes Okay, so I've got that going. I'm gonna cinch that down pretty good. That's probably good. All right, just snip off the excess. It's gonna rotate. That's okay. We're gonna fix that. So that looks a little sparse to me. I'm gonna just give that a few wraps to hold it in place. Good enough. That's all gonna get covered up with dubbing. Don't sweat it. Okay. So now look, this is kind of cool. 
So that, I want that to be a bit a little bushier. I've cut this off now, so I've got this square top on my feather, which I don't like. So what I'm gonna do is just pull this back. See, these are uncut here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna preen this feather back until I find that point where I'm going from kind of the cut to what I haven't cut off yet. And then I'm just gonna snip off that middle section. Okay. And now when I preen this forward, it's got a natural, not super square end to it. And I'm just gonna do exactly what I did before. That, and just pop that right on top and do the same thing again. I swear when I'm here by myself doing this and nobody's watching, I do it perfectly every time. It's amazing. So this is the approach. Looks pretty, it's getting there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay. Clean that up. So, you know, if you look at fish tails, I mean, they get really beat up. You know, they're like fighting for their lives and they're in the current and they're not perfect. Um, it, you know, very little in nature is actually perfectly symmetrical, perfectly square. Um, it's pretty unusual, especially when you're talking about living organisms. Um, so it's okay if this is not perfect and that is not, Perfect, but that's all right. I want it to look like a fish, little baby fish that's kind of had the snot kicked out of it. That's what the bigger lazy fish are looking for. They're looking for easy prey. So um, a baby fish that doesn't look good, uh, doesn't look perfect like a perfect uh, baby fish is what you want. So uh, this is a shout out to all my mediocre fly tires like me who are like, well, it doesn't look perfect. It doesn't look like the ones I buy in the fly shop. That's okay. That's what the fish want. They're not, they're not looking for something perfect. Um, so if you are tying flies to catch fish uh, or you're worried about it, I say go for it. <clears throat> Make them ugly. Ugly flies catch fish too. So don't sweat it. Just try it and um, see what happens. A lot of times you'll, you'll be rewarded. Okay, so I've got a pretty decent CDC feather here. I'm going to preen that back till I've got just a little tip, you know, you want to make sure, this is probably going to be pretty thick, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. Again, I see, see prior monologue lecture. So I'm going to print that back till I've got a little uh, bit that I'm going to use to tie down. I want to tie it. I'm going to tie it down with the curve of the feather up against the hook. Capture that. Pull that back. I don't know if you guys can hear my cat, one of my cats crying. Probably, she's probably locked out of something. That cat we call furry barracuda because you are giving her all nice pets on her tummy and then she goes crazy and tries to destroy you. <sighs> Cats, what are you going to do? Okay, so just like you can pick any color um, marabou or uh, CDC you want, you can mix this up, do all sorts of different colors. You can do any sort of dubbing you like. Um, so I am going to use... I'm going to use uh, Ice Dub, and the color I'm going to use is this olive brown. And that, I find, works really well. It's got, it's got some green, it's got a little bit of brown, and it's got some purple. So I'm just going to take a, a wee little pinch. Um, I have my, my wet sponge here that I use for my fingers, because that really helps. And I don't like to lick my fingers over and over again when I'm working with this stuff, because um, that's just how I am. I don't know if it's good for me or not. I just don't do it. Just had a situation here in my house. So there's a little odd break in the video, but anyway, we're all we're all good now. It's okay. So I'm just gonna keep dubbing this, build this up. You can make it as, as fat or as skinny as you like. This is about how I do it. You can feel free to go back over it. This is one of the great things about this watery olive thread that it's UV, it just 
I think it adds a little bit. You don't worry about it. The thread is pretty much hidden by the dubbing anyway. Even if you're going back over the dubbing, it doesn't matter. Don't be too worried about it. Just get the fly tied. I promise you, you won't catch fish if you have no flies. But you probably will catch fish if you tie some ugly lame old flies they will they will eat it if they're hungry i promise i promise they aren't looking for how you played it necessarily if it's more or less in the ballpark it's like think about it like a strike zone if it's more or less in the strike zone i know there's a lot of guys that like to fish <laughs> weird um so here's your sports metaphor bros if it's kind of in the strike zone more or less it's probably gonna work you know Sometimes you get a bad ump, and even if it's out of the strike zone, think of the think of the trout like a bad umpire. Okay, sports metaphors all done. All right, so I've got that done. It's not perfect, whatever. It's kind of a taper. It doesn't matter. You can do it flat, whatever. This is, this is the process, and then you know refine it for yourself um, as your time flies, whatever. Okay, so now I've got my hackle pliers on the CDC. One thing I definitely I do that people will tell me not to is I, I keep too short. I should probably have it longer when I'm when I'm actually wrapping. Um, if people have a criticism, that's probably a criticism. That's fair. <laughs> I should have more, but I, I just find I'm not as precise. So I'm just going to wrap this kind of loose open spiral wraps. I'm going to preen that feather back as I go. And make it so that it ends more or less right about there. And then this is a little trick I like to use. I don't know if this is known or not, whatever. Um, I'm going to angle it, and I'm just going to let that hackle pliers hang. Like that. I'm going to use gravity to help me out as I capture that, that stem, that feather there. Just like that. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to... Oh, thank you for coming off. Perfect. Just... Exactly right. Okay, so I've got that feather. I've got it forward. I'm going to go back again. Sorry about my fingers and the camera. I'm going to try to avoid that. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do, you can't really see it. I'm going to do this side. So I preen it back. Try not to stab my thumb too, too, too many times. I'm going to pull that stem over like that, and then I can capture it really solidly um, and not worry about it. So I should probably have that much thread out. My bobbin's squeaky. There we go. I've got that pretty well captured. I'm going to call that good. I'm going to come in and obviously trim that stem out. Try not to capture too many of those CDC barbels. That's what you pay the big bucks for. Okay. Here we go. Finish it up. If I want to be kind of whatever about it, which, you know, sometimes I do, be a little bit more nice. I'll take a little bit more dubbing another noodle and finish that off to cover up those thread wraps and, then, and that's, that's it whip finish if you want to add a spot of super glue add a spot of super glue can't hurt do that again because why not if you can't tie a knot tie a lot that's what i always say Okay, seat that. Done. There you go. That is your CDC microbugger um, on a size 10. You can tie it whatever size you like. Um, I've tied them down to size 12. It just depends on what you want to do. You make them super, super heavy, make them super, super light. It's a great fly. Works real well. This stuff just moves beautifully. I'll get along. Look at that. Look at all that movement. Don't you want to eat that? Yes, you do. You want to eat that, don't you, trout? So there you go. Give that a whirl. Tie it in a bunch of different colors. Let me know what happens. This one, um, this is just to show you kind of some of the variety. On this one, I even, I just tied a little orange bit of dubbing in, in the middle. And my idea was to kind of make it try to look like the Alvin um, by adding a little bit of orange that kind of looked like the egg sac. I'm going to take it out and I'm going to give it a try. Uh, I have no idea if it's going to work or not, or if that's going to be the reason that works, if it works. But um, I just thought it was interesting, and I, I was thinking I could maybe even build that one bit of dubbing up a little bit higher uh, or tease it out 
to make it look a little bit more like an egg sac, which would be kind of like a combination of a CDC microbugger and the alvin fly. I mentioned that kind of micro mini barred marabou. This one I added um, some embellishments here. There's just a little crystal flash. Um, I'll show you when I tie the alvin fly in the video, or if I did tie the alvin fly, depending on where I put this little clip when I make the video. Same, same deal. You just take whatever uh, kind of bling you want and you tie it on one side and then wrap it around, tie it on the other, um, snip it off, and that's it. It's super easy. I've got a Fulling Mill FM5105 hook in the vise, and I'm going to be using Uni 72 denier uh, thread in white for this. Just going to get that started. Pulled up a, a little bit of a bump, not much, it doesn't really matter. And then I've got some 4X. You probably use whatever you want, but this is uh, just any sort of, I like fluoro, but anything to hold the bead on there. I'll show you how it's going to work. That'll be fine. Get that going. Um, try to make sure it stays on the very top of the hook. Extent you can. I like to go around um, the front and the back to make sure it's not going to move. Get that under there. Just to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. Trim off the back. I'm gonna grab a bead. I mean, you can use whatever size bead you like. Um, this happens to be a 3.2 millimeter bead. You could go heavier or lighter if you wanted. Um, the key is kind of to get something that's gonna give you enough basis for the resin that we're gonna apply. I'll show you what I mean by that too. So I'm gonna take my bead doesn't really matter which way you go. Thread it onto that um, fluorocarbon. Try not to drop it. I dropped it. I have another one here. I'll find my cat playing with that one at night. I'll just hear it rink rolling around and the cat being crazy. All right, so I have another bead right here. This one is pink. I was going to use an orange one. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to capture the uh, fluorocarbon there with my thread. And this can be a little bit tricky because it's a slippery material. So you may have to hold it and go around with your thread and you pull it without breaking, obviously. Okay. Just got that pretty good. And then I'm going to cinch that down pretty tight again go around hold it in place and then i'm going to go back and around these beads so i want the bead to be on the very top and i'm going to just go around it to make sure it stays you really kind of can't overdo this honestly okay so once i've got that locked in trim that out and then I'll probably just throw a few more on here just to make sure. And that, and I'm gonna advance my thread up here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some orange resin, whatever you like. I like something that's got a little bit of a UV to it. And I'm just gonna paint that bead. Try and get a little extra in there on the sides. You want to go in layers. You don't want to do too much the first time out. And I'm going to cook it. My torch. And I'm going to lather, rinse, repeat. It's starting to look more egg sacky. So these are, you know, the baby salmon or probably even 
trout. I don't honestly know if trout have the same kind of fry, but probably baby fish. And so this is starting to look more, if you imagine, like a little exact situation happening. And again, and at this point, I want to kind of turn it over so that it's, if it drips or sags, it's going down because that's how this hook is going to ride. It's going to ride like this, like it is right there. Okay, and then I'm going to take some, this is just thin UV resin. You can use whatever you like just to give it a bit of shine. And I find that that orange stuff can be a little tacky. So this will help reduce the tack if I can get any out of here. Cook that a little bit. All right, I have to go take a work call, I'll be back. Okay, so we've got our egg sack. I'll set up, and then this, I'm gonna tie this one with bucktail. Um, I'll show some examples at the end, but you can tie it with uh, Arctic Fox is really nice. Um, you can also do it with synthetics. I've had days where they'll eat bucktail and they won't eat anything else. So it just totally, totally depends. I'm just cleaning out the um, little shorties on the bucktail. And then I also, I tend to clean out the long ones too on these. I kind of want this to be fairly consistent in terms of length. I've got my clump of bucktail. You can tie these probably down even on a size 12 hook. Um, it just depends, you know, maybe like the hook shank longer, but you can tie them really small if you want to. Remember, these are baby fish, so um, they can be pretty tiny. So I'm going to do that. Put my clump of bucktail, and this is not a lot of bucktail. This is a sparse, sparse fly. So it spins a little when I do that. So I'm just gonna take it, not crank down those wraps and bring it back over the top. Now I'm gonna kind of crank a little bit. Don't break on me, pull it back. Okay, starting to keep it from spinning. A bit more, okay. now I can actually cinch that down. See that's super, super sparse. It's not a thick fly at all. Like that. Trim that out. Okay. And then I'll clean up those butts a little bit. So you don't have to add a little bit of something shiny. Um, I like a little bit of shine. I like uh, the polar flash, I think is really good. Um, this is a nice, super shiny material. You can see that. Uh, something else that works good, knocking stuff over. You could do the Mirage. This is uh, the Flashaboo Mirage, also really great. Um, another thing that works really great is Crystal Flash. I have uh, about a gazillion colors of, of Crystal Flash. You can do anything you like. Here's some Rainbow Crystal Flash. You can use um, green, you know, anything you like. So um, for purposes of this, I'm just going to use the screen um, Mirage Flashaboo. But Anything that's got a little shine to it um, will work just dandy. I'm going to take a couple strands. Those three. Two, three strands is really all you need. Again, it's a very sparse fly. I'm going to let my OCD guide me here and even out those, those ends. So that's pretty close. It doesn't have to be. Obviously, it doesn't have to be exact. So. Put that up against the near side of the hook. I'm going to capture that. Tighten that down. Trim the excess. Just going to rotate my hook, my vise. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically wrap this around. And then I can measure out the length more or less. It should be right about a little bit longer than um, the end of the bucktail. If a few little bucktail bits are um, longer, that's fine. So that's my length. And then I'm going to rotate my vise. And I'm going to cinch that down on the other side. Then I can trim off my excess, clean that up, make sure it's all nice in there. <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna pull that back so it's more or less even and snip it. And that's that. Okay. And don't worry that this is flaring. I'm gonna take care of that at the end show you how I manage that little issue because the bucktail flares, flares a little bit too. Okay, so now I'm going to put a little bit more bucktail on the top. This is an olive green. You can use orange. You can also, I'll show you uh, some complete flies, but you can put a little thin layer of orange bucktail in there. Just, a, you know, just a little bitty few strands. It looks kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to take again, this is I mean, we're talking a quarter to a half a pencil diameter, not a whole lot. This is just olive bucktail. Clean out those butts. Covered in bucktail. I'm covered in tail, y'all. <laughs> All right. So same deal. Clean those out. I'm going to check and see if I got any long stragglers. It looks pretty good to me. And then... Maybe a couple here. Check this out. Okay, so there's my bundle. I can put it so it's a little bit farther than the white bucktail. It doesn't have to be like tons farther or whatever. It's more or less. I can kind of adjust that as I need to. That is good. Okay. Remember this fly, um, it rides point up like this. So this, I am tying this onto what will be the top of the hook when it is in the water. Okay, So just like with the white on the bottom, I'm going to kind of slowly increase my pressure, trying to keep it on the top of the hook. What is the top? The water. I've got that. I'm going to crank that down a little bit. Come in, trim this out. What I do, if you have a bodkin, use a bodkin. I don't see the point in spending money on a bodkin. I just use toothpicks and I kind of try to even those out a little bit. More or less on everything on the half. I've got, I did not do a great job with my uh, tinsel here, but that's okay. So I'm going to, you can see my tinsel is kind of sticking up on the sides here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put that, push that down and come in nice and tight here. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do to try to, I've got all these flyers, so I'm gonna preen that back and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go over the top loosely, right? And then come back around and do a couple figure eights loose. Not super tight, just loose. Just like that. Look at that. Cleaned it all up. Oh, you can't see that way because you're on the other side. Look at that. Now it's all nice and sleek. Works every time. Perfect. Okay. Come in here and finish building a nice thread head here. Looks pretty good. Okay. 
Okay. We'll finish that. If you want to use your hands, you can use your hands. If you don't, that's okay. It doesn't have to be super tight. I like doing a couple turns, but okay. Seat that well. Come in. Trim that up. Okay. Throw some eyes on here. These are the smallest eyes. These are um. I don't know. These are some sort of ear. Living eyes, whatever eyes you want. I'm going to use the smaller red ones. And the way I'm going to do that, is I'm going to find my super glue on my super messy desk. And I'm just going to put a wee, wee little bit. You see, I've got the vise tied, well, tilted sideways. And then just put. Just enough to kind of get those threads a little bit damp so that the eye will stick. Okay, go like that. Rotate it. And again, lather, rinse, repeat situation. A little bit. Sure those eyes are more or less lined up. They look pretty good to me. And I'm going to come in. I'm going to fill that gap in between the eyes. So I've got some resin in there. Hit it with the light. Rotate. Do the same. And now here, I'm actually going to get some resin over those wraps that I made. Just try to reinforce the fly a little bit. That's pretty much it. Um, if I wanted to be real precise about it, I could go back through and make sure everything's coated. But that's that's my Elden fly, Bucktail Elden. It'll swim this way. And this has been a great fly for me this spring. I mean, it's still kind of winter, but um, moving into spring. So there's a few other examples that I've got. So here's one where I put that little uh, flash of orange in there. I think that looks pretty cool. It's all synthetics. Looks a lot like the bucktail, a little synthetic. I tied this one maybe a little bit long. One more. <laughs>